Well, God bless you on this Easter. May he give you strength. And boy, we need it, don't we? Things seem to be changing so fast. We need the strength. Many times our heart seems to be empty of hope. But folks, it doesn't have to be empty of hope because the tomb is empty of Christ. That's the Easter message. That's the Easter promise. And that's what I want to talk to you about for just a few moments. If you don't want to talk about that, that's okay. I would encourage you to fast forward through my video, through this message then, and get to the song at the end. Mac Powell is going to minister to us. I've known Mac for decades. This distinctive voice of his has touched hearts all over the world, and he's got a powerful, powerful song. Really, two songs. He's, he's coupling uh, a beautiful hymn with an original piece, and I think it's perfect. It's perfect for Easter Sunday, and I want you to be a part of it. If you've got a few moments, though, to let me remind you why Easter matters, I'm opening my Bible to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. If you've got your Bible, open it up. Matthew chapter 28, looking at verses 1 through 4. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to see the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, because an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing became white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Boy, how things have changed since Friday. At the crucifixion, there was sudden darkness, silent angels, and mocking soldiers. But here at the tomb, the soldiers are silent, and there's light everywhere, and an angel shows up and starts talking. The one who was said to be dead is alive, and the soldiers who are supposed to be alive, well, they really look dead. The women can tell something is up, or better said, they can sense that someone is up. Here's what the angel says. Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has been raised from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come and see the place where his body was lying. Boy, those words will mess with you. If they're false, they take the good out of Good Friday. But if they're true, then, I don't know, pull out the fiddle and put on your dancing shoes because we got something to celebrate. And so the real question is, are they true? Are they true? Was the tomb really empty? Well, the invitation of the angel to the women is the invitation of God to us. Come and see. Come and see. Come and examine the vacant tomb. Did you know that the empty tomb never resists examination? We can come and take a look. Take a look at the vacated tomb. Do you not find it interesting? Do you not find it interesting that the opponents of Christ never challenged the vacant tomb? I mean, they never, they never spoke up when the apostles were speaking up. And boy, don't you know they would have if they could have. Uh, they, could have they could have put an end to the infant movement of Christ just by walking all the people to that occupied tomb. They knew where Jesus was buried. I mean, they had placed guards in front of the tomb for crying out loud, but they had nothing to say. And when Peter and the other apostles were preaching, they were silent. In fact, their silence is every bit as eloquent as the sermons of the Christians. And speaking of the Christians, come and see. Come and see them. Come and see how they're behaving. I mean, they are, a revival has broken out. You can't get them to, to be quiet. Before the crucifixion, you couldn't get them to speak up. And with all due respect, after the crucifixion, after the resurrection, you can't get them to shut up. I mean, they're, they're, they go all over the world talking about their Christ because they saw him resurrected from the dead. Again, they were afraid. Before the crucifixion, I mean, they were as frightened as, I don't know, cats at a dog pound. I mean, they were hiding in every available corner in Jerusalem. They had the doors locked for fear of the Jews. Yet after the resurrection, they were preaching in the same precinct where Christ was arrested. What happened? Well, I think a couple of things. Number one, they spent 40 days with the resurrected Lord. And number two, they received the power of the Holy Spirit within them. Come and see. Come and see the difference Come and see the difference that the resurrected Lord can make in a person's life. Come and see the vacant tomb. And come and see what He can do for you. My friend, you need courage. We all do. 
These are tough days. This is no time for the timid soul, for the frail spirit. You need the power of Christ, and He is here to help you. He is here to help you, and you can trust Him. We have this assurance because of the empty tomb. And this is the assurance that Mac Powell is going to sing to us about right now. God bless you, Mac, and God bless all of you. One, two, three, four. Blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, what a foretaste Of glory divine And heir of salvation Purchase of God Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, yes, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, yes, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. Well, this is my story, yes, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, yes, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. There is hope for the helpless and rest for the weary and love for the broken heart. There is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing. He'll meet you wherever you are. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus.